Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you all this morning. Sit down, listen to the teacher. <laughs> Grand to see you all this morning. Um, everything's in the notices. You might want to watch Antiques Roadshow tonight, though, because Porchester Part Two's on. Yeah, Antiques Roadshow. I think it's at eight o'clock, it says in the notices, so um, stay awake long enough to watch it. <laughs> um, we're gearing up for APCM at the end of the month. Um, if you're not on the electoral roll, you'd like to be on the electoral roll, please speak to me today. And um, I've got a list of electoral roll if you, at the back of church if you want me to check anybody. Okay, so if you know somebody that needs to come off or somebody that needs to go on, this is your opportunity. Um, also, we're gearing up for... We're going to do the street party that we used to do indoors on August Bank Holiday on Pentecost Sunday. Hoping to do it outside on the path. I'm sure you're all thinking of great things to bring, but um, we'll just keep in your diary that Sunday, the 5th of June, part of the Pentecost and the Platinum anniversary, we'll be, we'll be doing something outside. Tea room will probably be shut because we'll be giving the food away for free. <laughs> and they're not going to pay, are they really? <laughs> so, APCM, electoral roll, and thinking about the Pentecost Praise Street Party where we can share what we have with others. Thank you very much. Time of silence before we start the service. Thank you.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Would you sit, please? I had the privilege yesterday of conducting a thanksgiving for the birth of a youngster who was actually born within days of their grandparents dying, or one of their grandparents dying, so it was round about the time of the funeral. And as we were talking um, afterwards, they said, well, what do we actually, uh, how do we actually help Eloise to, to, to pray? And I said, it's as simple as, you know, when she wakes up, once she can talk, you know, let's say good morning to the Lord. And I thought, hang on, we're here in God's presence today. Have you said good morning to the Lord yet? If not, good morning, Lord. Good morning, Lord. So we've recognised we're in God's presence. We've recognised in that hymn, the wonder and everything else. And we welcome one another in that love this morning. So we thank God for the opportunity of being together. Thank you all for coming. New and old. We've been talking about old towns this morning, so if I'm feeling even more old than normal, um, I've been reminded that I taught some of you back in goodness knows how long ago. But young and old, we are all here and loved and known by God as individuals. So what a fantastic opportunity we have as we are in his presence now. So let's prepare our hearts, shall we, as we sing the prayer of preparation. <coughs> Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and non-believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, help us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand for the glory.
let's say together the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you sit for our readings, please? The reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 11. The apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had all also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. In. The Spirit told me to go to, with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it, just as it had come upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed in Lord Jesus Christ, who was it that I should hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. During the supper, when, Jesus had, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God had been glorif has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me and as I said to the Jews and so I say to you now, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of Christ. Holy God, open our hearts that we may be attentive to your spirit among us and focus our minds that we may discern your will and guide our feet that we may walk the road of love and peace. Amen. I apologise for saying that we only needed uh, one reading before the Gospel because I realised that uh, this, there was another reading for this morning from the book of Revelation and it would have worked well in because the, the second reading that we would have had uh, is from Revelation, the last book of the Bible, in which we catch a glimpse of heaven and it's the end of the age and heaven and earth have become one and everything is living together in perfect harmony all the people of the nations together the lion will lie down with the lamb there will be great peace there'll be great joy there'll be great love and there'll be no more crying because all the emotional and physical pain which causes tears, have all gone. And then in our other reading that we heard this morning from Acts chapter 11, it brings us down to earth again with a bit of a bang. Let me explain. Because the reality is that down here in the earth, things are a little bit different to what they will be one day when heaven and earth are joined. Because in Acts chapter 11, we see one of Christ's apostles, Peter, who is full of prejudices, um, prejudices against people who were not like him. He was a Jew and they were Gentiles. And when the report came to Peter in Jerusalem that over in Joppa there was a whole crowd of Gentiles who had been baptised and filled with the Holy Spirit just the same as the Jewish believers in Jerusalem had, Peter's old prejudices come up about Jews versus Gentiles. And he thought, really, I don't think so. I don't think God would bother with these kind of people who are so different. And so the contrast between perfect harmony on earth and bad attitudes 
perfect harmony in heaven and bad attitudes on earth remind me of the little ditty to dwell above with the saints we love that will be utter glory but to dwell below with the saints we know well that's another story <laughs> Jesus said in the gospel, by this all people will know that you are my disciples because you love one another. Hmm. So how do we know if someone is a real Christian or at least they are a growing spirit-filled Christian following Jesus? How do we know? Not that Jesus ever used the word Christian he never once used it. He always spoke about followers or disciples. So what do Christ's true followers and disciples look like? Are they people who believe the correct doctrines of the faith in the church? Are they people who go to church regularly? Are they people who are morally upright? and do works of charity? Are these the marks of the followers of Jesus? Well, they're included, but the basic mark of the follower of Jesus is this. Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Now, the love that Jesus was talking about was not a cosy, sentimental feeling that one gets when we are among friends who are just like us. If that was love, then Jesus would never have said, I'm giving you a commandment to love one another. In other words, I'm ordering you to love one another. Why did he have to say it like that? I'm ordering you to love one another. Because the warm, cozy love that we have for friends and family come naturally. It would not have to be commanded. So therefore, Jesus must be talking about something very different than ordinary, natural, family friendship love. Let's now jump over to the gospel reading again where he said that it was the night of the last supper the Passover his last night on earth before he died and one of his friends Judas Iscariot had just walked out of his life and most of the others who were in the room that night he knew were about to fail him just at the time when he needed them most Jesus knew what was going on and what would happen. And he knew that he was about to be rejected by them. And he also knew that there would be recriminations among them, as often happens, as each one accused the other of having let the Lord down. No, no we wouldn't have gone away if you hadn't have gone away. I wouldn't have denied him if you hadn't have denied him. You denied him first before I did. No, you did. And so on and so forth. But there would be repercussions because the whole group would be thrown into turmoil that very night. And so Jesus said to them, knowing what was ahead, you have to love one another just as I have loved you. C.S. Lewis in his book, the four loves tells us that there are four Greek words for the English word love. There is eros, which means sexual or physical love. There is philos, the love between good friends. There is storge, the family love. But the Greek word that John uses here in his gospel is agape. I think you've heard me speak of this before. Agape, that's the fourth Greek word for love. 
And the Christian community is to be marked by agape love, which is a different sort of love. And this is the love which chooses to love, even when we don't feel like it. It's the love that we have for the stranger. It's almost like the welcome that people feel when they come in here. But what happens when the novelty wears off and we get to know them what they're really like? <laughs> Do we still have that agape love for them when they annoy us and rub us up the wrong way? That's the test, isn't it? And what about the unlovely? And what about the unloving who sometimes come into our churches? The selfish, the angry. <coughs> or do we just love those who love us and will reciprocate love back? Or do we reach out to others with that love? In the glory days of the charismatic renewal in the 1970s and the early 80s, we used to sing the chorus... And they'll know we are Christians by our love. And these were emotionally charged services. And we would all put our arms around each other and smile as we enjoyed the warm, cosy feeling of the moment. But that's not even the kind of love that Jesus was talking about. It's not the reciprocal love that we have for our friends. That's philos. Agape love is the love that we should have when the music stops, when the mood changes, when we find ourselves confronted and challenged by unloving people, or people who in the natural we would have nothing in common with. We perhaps find them boring and wouldn't want to spend time with them. It's then that agape love kicks in which is the mark of the disciple and the follower. Tertullian, a third century Christian leader, quoted a pagan who, despite not being able to go along with our beliefs, had to admit, see how these Christians love one another. I wonder if they could say that today about our fellowship and our churches. Because the love that the early Christians had for each other was not experienced in any other section of society at the time. The only love that they knew, and indeed the only love that a lot of people out there today know, is the love which exploits and uses others. The love that's reciprocated. The love that we have only for our friends. But among the Christian community, there was agape a different sort of love shown, and it attracted people to their community. And could that be said of our church? Could that be said here at St. Mary's? There, there are people out there who have been burned by the church and have not found it to be always that loving fellowship that we so desire. And there have been many clergy who have left the ministry over the years because of the way that they have been treated by church members. Others feel that they have been bullied by the clergy and hurt by them, and so they have left. And other people point to the way some churches have infighting over the most insignificant things. Well, as a vicar, I uh, get to hear the worst of what goes on here. <laughs> most of you who come here are blissfully, and I say that, blissfully unaware. You come, you sing the hymns, you go away again, and hallelujah, isn't St. Mary's lovely? Yeah. 
The ones who are a little bit more in the, involved in the centre, like the PCC, <laughs> often know a little bit more <laughs> than you do. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we have to deal with some of the grotty stuff. Yeah, we do. And you know something? I know some of the stuff here that the PCC don't know. Because <laughs> things are shared with me in confidence. So what keeps me here? <laughs> what keeps me in the job? <laughs> Is it the money? No. Is it the house? That's a big upkeep. <laughs> what keeps me here is this. Because the vast majority of this congregation are good and kind and loving people. And that's true. The vast majority are good and kind and loving. And I know that because I know all the faults as well. The other thing is that in hearing the I've been hurt by the church stories, you're only hearing half the story. It may be that they, who feel they've been hurt, had also in time been very hurtful. And even the best of people can only take so much. So it's very challenging, isn't it? Because as I preach this sermon, I, ha I learn very early on as a preacher never to point my finger at the congregation in preaching and say, you lot, you lot, you wicked lot. I never say that. Because as has been pointed out, for every finger pointing out at you, there's three pointing back at me. And sometimes... I hear that voice saying, you hypocrite, if only they knew the thoughts that go through your mind, they would never come to St. Mary's again. So therefore, you would probably ask me, oh, okay, very, very well, Vicar, very sweet sermon, you're telling us to love everybody in the church, agape love. Do you love everybody in the church, Vicar? <laughs> Do you love everybody in the church? And the honest answer is this, that I really do love 99% of you. <laughs> I really do love 99% of you. And the reason why I love 99% of you is because I feel that you love me and like me where you are. So it's reciprocal. Because you like me, I like you. You love me, I, I love you. Aren't we all happy together? But what about the 1% of people in the congregation that I don't particularly like and find it difficult to love? And they tend to be people who are rude to me or are hurtful to me or who say things to me or about me they are the ones who deliberately avoid me after the service or look at the rota and find out when I'm on and make sure that that's the service they don't come to. It's true. It's only 1%. And if I find that I do try and be nice and loving to them, I fear that I will only make myself more vulnerable and be open to more hurt and rejection but I can't excuse my behavior I, I still know it's wrong and it's sinful and it's something I confess I have to work on and maybe by the time I leave here I'll be able to say I love you all everybody <laughs> in the congregation my dear departed mother-in-law is buried over in uh, Selsey churchyard and the gravestone next to hers has the name of the man and underneath it it says loved by everyone <laughs> really <laughs> I don't think they'll be able to put that in my gravestone <laughs> loved by everyone loved by most no loved by many Loved by a few. <laughs> Who knows? So, when people are rude 
and hurtful to us. It's so easy to act as the hurt victim without realising that perhaps they are in fact the victim of things in life which we are not aware of and that makes them prickly and rude. We are not aware of the pain, the loss, the rejection which has caused them to be bitter and to lash out. These words by the American poet Miller Williams have always been insightful for me. He writes, have compassion for everyone you meet, even if they don't want it. What appears bad manners, an ill temper or cynicism is always a sign of things no ears have heard, no eyes have seen. You don't know what's going on down there where the spirit meets the bone. It's true, isn't it? During this Mental Health Awareness Week, which we are in, we need to realise that the church will attract the broken and the wounded. And while many will not have fully developed psychiatric illnesses, some will have borderline personality disorders. And quite a few people in the church are, as they say, somewhere on the scale. <clears throat> so while no excuses can be made, it does sometimes explain a lot. But we're not psychiatrists. And like them, we are too human and have our own vulnerabilities. But we do need to start being a bit gentler on one another. The other thing is this, that there can be change in people's lives. God can work in people that we have given up on. Peter found this in our reading in Acts 11. He admits that he was prejudiced against Gentile pagans and considered them to be beyond the pale of God's grace. But he took the initiative. He went to where they were, sacrificed his own pride and prejudice, shared Jesus with them, and miracles happened. Right now, these people that we're thinking about may be closed to love. And, and, and I feel that they, they would be closed to anything that I could ever give. But the day might come when things could change. Right now, they are strong in their own eyes and are in fighting mode. But there might come a time when you have the chance to serve them with a loving act. Be open to that opportunity it may be a grace moment agape love is not something we can work up or even have naturally it is actually a gift of god a grace of the holy spirit love divine says the hymn all loves excelling joy of heaven to earth come down fix in us thy humble dwelling it's a grace given by the holy spirit when you suddenly find yourself looking at that person with incredible love and you don't know where it came from the poet w h auden was an atheist who found his faith again his reawakening began when teaching in malvern where he experienced in june 1933 what he called a vision of agape when while sitting with three fellow teachers he suddenly found that he loved them for themselves, that their existence had infinite value for him, and which he defined as the love that loves the unlovely, the love that gives. For love will ultimately win, and in this Easter season we close with the words of the late Bishop Desmond Tutu, good is stronger than evil, love is stronger than than hate. Light is stronger than darkness and life is stronger than death. Amen.
Let us stand and confess the faith of the Church as we say together the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you sit for our prayers, please? In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, you give us life. Jesus, you give us love. Spirit, you give us wisdom. Holy Three, you give us yourself. Help us to give our lives, to give our love, to give our minds, to give ourselves to you. After the words, let us pray to the Lord, the response is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the places torn apart by war, violence and hatred, that humility and love might prevail. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love. For all who minister to us here, that they may feel encouraged and appreciated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. for a blessing upon the labours of all and for the right use of the riches of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees and all who are in danger, 
that they may be relieved and protected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have lost loved ones and for those who watch and wait. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the faith of Christ and for those whose faith is known only to you, that they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. This day, Lord, may we dream your dreams. May we reflect your love. May we do your work. May we taste your peace. We bring all our prayers together as we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand, please? The risen Christ came and stood in the midst of his disciples and said, Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work, bringing order from chaos and filling emptiness with life. Christ, your Son, risen from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us. Your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all, for by the cross eternal life is ours and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden the mystery dawned that he whom they had loved and lost is with us now in every place forever making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore. He renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the spirit, who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the slaves walked free at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant it is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine that overshadowed by his life-giving power they may be the body and blood of your Son, and that we may be kindled with the fire of your love and receive for the service of your kingdom. Help us to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of St. Mary, the apostles and the prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. 
Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We pray together as we dedicate ourselves. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We gladly publish the bands of marriage between Manuel Alonso Perez and Ilona Betsy Parkinson, both of this parish, between Perry Edward Leonard Gibbs and Emma Jane Jefferson, both of St Peter's Church, Titchfield, wishing to marry here because of Emma's qualifying connection between Alexander Robert Edward Mitchell and Amy Laura Minchell, both of All Saints Tooting, marrying here by virtue of Alexander's qualifying connection, between Daniel John Creamer and Leah Rebecca Julia Day, both of this parish, between Helen Fall and Christopher Paul Hawke, both of this parish. Between Harry Stephen Lewis Willett and Erin Louise Wood, both of St Cuthbert's Parish, Donington, marrying here by virtue of Erin's qualifying connection. These are for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason why these may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Let's hold each one of those in our prayers as they embark on this tremendous journey for them into their marriage and into life afterwards. Let's hold them in all the preparations that they're doing and ask God's blessing on them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our closing hymn, we will stand is, Look ye saints, the sight is glorious.
God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all you love now and evermore. Amen. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work among us, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Better than that. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. All right? Go on then. Right, okay. <laughs> With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work among us, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. 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 That's better. <laughs> it was.